Hey, welcome to Modern Wall Street's Trader Talk. And this just in, the Trump administration finally announced their corporate tax plans. And joining me is Stephen Guilfoyle, president of Sarge 986. Hello, Stephen. Thanks for joining me. Or should I call you Prez? <laughs> You can call me Sarge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sarge. Well, speaking of president, we finally got it's out. The corporate tax cut of 15%. What's the best news coming out of this, whether it's repatriation or growth? For the economy, probably repatriation, lower corporate tax rates. For Steve Guilfoyle, hey, I own a pass-through business, man. I like that part of the corporate tax framework. I like the idea of a 15% tax. I. I'm a little worried for some people in the middle class with the, with the certain deductions that are going away, although the, the standard deduction will be doubled, which I find hopeful that they'll at least cover, if not all, at least some of the other deductions that look to be done away with. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. This still has to go to Congress. They still have to fight about it. They still have to negotiate. It's going to change. And we're months away from anything definitive happening, probably for 2018. True. Well, of course, the markets, at least, love the idea of a tax cut. But what's also fueling the momentum this week are earnings. Now, we have some high expectations. Are you pleased so far? And what's on your earnings watch, Sarge? I think earnings have been spectacular. I, I really, really, really like the direction that we see here in the U.S. We're a little bit behind the rest of the world. You know, global GDP is probably running above 3%. Europe's been stronger. Japan seems to be picking up momentum. The last numbers out of China were really pretty good. Here we are slugging along with the GDP for the first quarter. Consensus is probably 1.1 percent. The Atlanta Fed says no, it's 0.5 percent. So we really need to see growth. And the improved earnings that we're seeing, in most cases, I mean, some of them are, we're seeing some misses. And when you miss, you, you pay for it dearly. Some of these co co corporations that have put out lousy numbers have been really hitting the teeth, such as Seagate Technology, which I own. That, well, that's why that one comes to mind. But a lot of the other names, have been spectacular. Uh, I mean, right now my favorite stock is probably Walmart, which I think I gave you about maybe a couple weeks back. That stock seems to have momentum. They're putting up a fight. I really like what they're doing. And the earnings are probably still more than a month out. I haven't looked at the data actually, but the retail usually comes at the end of the, of the season. So that's, that's a name that I think maybe people want to get behind. Coca-Cola survived some shaky earnings, but they're moving in the right direction. A positive note out from Credit Suisse. I like Coca-Cola, even though they're not really moving yet. A lot of the tech names, they've been ramping up. Nice earnings. And they will be benefactors of the repatriation that you already mentioned. So, I mean, there's almost so much to mention regarding earnings that we can't really go everywhere. But as long as the banks are strong, and they have been, and as long as we see the growth that maybe this inspires, then interest rates will rise and you'll see the banks go even higher, hopefully. All right. Oh, Stephen, I wish I had you for a longer time. There's so much to talk about, but you know what? Let's prepare our viewers for the end of the week, just in case we don't get you, because there are two alarming subjects. GDP, which, like you said, if you're watching the Atlanta Fed, we're looking at 0.5%, and there's also the potential of a government shutdown if they don't agree on the budget. So which is bigger news right now, Sarge? The government shutdown would be bigger news if it was going to happen. I don't believe it's going to happen. They seem like they're playing nice in the sandbox. The president has backed off of a couple of his stiffer demands. I think the Democrats are willing to give up a little bit on some of the Obamacare things, especially we saw it in the tax plan that just came out a little bit, that 3.8% Obamacare tax is coming out. If the Democrats receive that well, then I think they'll probably play nice as far as not shutting down the government. And it seems like so far that's going to go that way. So the market won't fully discount that till Friday. Maybe not till, maybe not beyond because they have really till Saturday. Yeah. But, but the bigger deal is GDP in the long run. We need to see improvement in GDP. We need to see not just the 2% that we've meandered around for the last eight years. I think it was 1.6% for full year 2016. But we need to see something inspired by the potential for tax cuts, something inspired by, the, by this huge increase in business activity, what earnings are up 11.4% so far. I mean, we're early in the season, but 78% of firms are beating EPS expectations, 64% are beating revenue expectations. Both of those are high. And the 11.4% increase in earnings that we're seeing is above the consensus of 9.1% if it can be maintained. All right. Well, Stephen, just in case, it's not likely that we're going to have a government shutdown. But 
just in case there is this tail risk, that's the phrase being thrown around, we see a sell-off. How do you advise going about the situation? Would you look at it as a buying opportunity or would you, you know, over the usual like treasuries or gold, see some value in the stock market? If markets open lower on Monday or on Sunday night in the futures market because of a government shutdown, I would certainly look at that as a buying opportunity. It would be temporary. They would repair with some kind of budget that would probably even pay back wages to the government employees that were temporarily laid off. It happens, eight, I think, 18 times since President Ford. They, if it happens, it happens. And if they sell off on it, you can buy a few shares. Uh, well, thank you so much, Stephen. We'll just have to look out for that, and we will be prepared. Thanks to you. Hope to see you soon, Sarge. Take care, Olivia.